Hi everyone, for today's video we have another Ace Files video where I invite players to commentate on the same dogfight. I find this format really interesting because everyone's watching the same fight and you get to hear how their thoughts and ideas line up or differ. And you get to be the decision maker on what you agree with. If you are new to this channel, I focus on multiplayer sim gameplay, so if you're into that, please subscribe. For those that are returning, this video is slightly different from past versions. In this one, I decided to invite a newer player which I think will be an interesting point of reference as the more experienced players speak. Lastly, please note that there isn't always a clear-cut answer, so people's styles are reflected in their thoughts. So let's meet today's commentators. Hi, I'm Fragster. I go by Fragster on Twitch and YouTube. My YouTube channel covers various things, but I'm starting to post more IL2 videos on it. And I sometimes go live on Twitch. I would class myself as a average player in IL2, I have played IL2 for a year and then stopped for about a year, then started again in VR. Uh, I can do alright in dogfights, I can get one or two kills per sortie on average, but I don't have a great grasp of dogfight theory and I often find myself getting killed. Hey guys, I'm Revolz. I'm the guy who recently developed the split rankings and aircraft rankings mods for the IL2 stats website and I've been playing IL-2 for about four years now. And it's my first flight sim, and I have accumulated about 1,400 hours of game time. I play exclusively multiplayer, and I mostly fly fighters. I tend to stick to the 109 and Soviet fighters, but I do give the other types a fly out from time to time. Hey guys, Tempest here. Uh, you can find me on Twitch at Tempest7MR uh, at twitch.com. Uh, I am a virtual pilot, also a private pilot in real life. I've had a, I've been flying flight sims since I've been a young child and uh, doing a lot of competitive PvP flight sims over the years, at least uh, a decade or probably more than that, maybe 15 years experience of doing PvP flight sims, mainly uh, Warbird stuff, uh, World War II stuff, but uh, more recently doing a lot of DCS. So um, again, thanks Enigma so much for uh, having me join this commentary, and uh, let's dive into it. So it looks like we are uh, in a Focke-Wulf 190A6 today with a four cannon loadout, and this is pretty unique. Where it looks like we're going into a dead equal merge neutral merge with a yak in the wild. Uh, you don't usually see that um, in a live server play. Like you'll So what do I think Enigma should do in this merge? In most scenarios, I would have dipped my nose down here and done a 180 degree turn at corner speed, which is about 480 kph for the 190, which capitalizes on our strengths and plays to the yak's weaknesses. Enigma instead decides to do an Immo man in order to break line of sight and try to using the cloud cover here and try and get a drop on the yak, which I don't certainly don't think is uh, the wrong move. He straight away breaks from the cloud. Personally, I wouldn't really go into the cloud here because you could end up breaking visual contact with the other plane, and I don't really think that's a good idea. Just just because they could do anything while you can't see them. So you can see that the uh, yak has now mimicked Enigma's uh, Immo Man. And we are now both at a low speed, which is exactly what we wanted to avoid. And I think Enigma realizes this at this moment and says, oh crap, I have to finish this fight now before this uh, situation degenerates further. And he pulls out flaps to try and pull a shot on the Yak-9, which I certainly agree with. You want to end the fight right now before the Yak-9 really solidifies his advantage. Uh, Enigma tries to pull for a gunshot here, can't quite pull the nose. He's got four cannons, so he's pretty heavy. Um, and that's going to make it difficult for him to pull lead. He tries again, but just can't quite get the nose up. Leveraging the flaps to try to stabilize his flight path, uh, something that I'm not sure I would do. He does nearly manage to get guns on here, so it's worked out okay so far. In terms of turn rate, the Focke-Wulf really doesn't benefit from having its flaps out. They act more as an air brake than anything else. You see how the way the Yak-9 just zoomed over us like that? He really has got a big uh, energy advantage over us. So at this point, I'd be thinking about disengaging and resetting the fight. So in the next merge, or the one after that perhaps, I'd just consider not turning with the Yak and going in a slight shallow dive. And again, another merge. So one thing you'll notice here, so Enigma very, very smartly is trying to force the one-circle fight 
Um, he's not trying to get into a rate fight uh, with a yak. Uh, he's a total disadvantage. Unfortunately for him here, uh, being in a flock with a6 with the extra cannons in particular, he has no advantages in a dogfight uh, against uh, a yak like this. He could probably dive away. He's got a little bit of a roll advantage, but uh, nothing offensively. He loses in a one circle and he'll lose in a two circle, but um, his disadvantages in the one circle aren't nearly as great uh, as they are in a third circle. Uh, as they are in a two circle in a rate fight. So it's really good to see him here continuing to force that one circle fight, put it in a nose position fight. Cause if he can get a lucky shot with those 420 millimeters, uh, he's going to put an end to this fight quick. I don't think I'd be trying to fight this yet quite so much in the vertical this time. All right. He's coming over the top again, trying to get that nose on his opponent really needs to land an early hit. And you can see now he's getting some losing cues. He's just really, dropping further and further behind the uh, every every remerge uh, the yak is further up in the HUD and or the HUD the the, the forward canopy now that we've uh, disengaged the main goal I think should be to get some separation from the yak using the 190s superior speed since more separation means more options however I think Enigma makes a mistake here he uh, maintains his altitude of about three kilometers which is solidly inside the supercharger gap of the 190's engine. Basically, the 190 has crappy engine performance between 1.5 kilometers and 3.5 kilometers. In fact, I think the Yak is a bit faster than us at this altitude, which should have instead initiated a shallow dive to about one kilometer of altitude, and that way we'd be able to generate more separation and then, again, have more options. Breaks away and does what appears to be a rehearsed tactic of some kind, where he's trying to extend away and roll at the same time to presumably to keep an eye on the yak. Well, I don't really agree with these rolls. What you should instead do is set up snap views to your 5 and 7 o'clock position and just do slight rolls to be able to check your 6 completely. The way he does it, he loses quite a bit of speed each time he does one of these rolls, which means we'll get less and less separation from the yak in this extension. I'm picking a direction towards home. And the big thing he's doing here with these rolling maneuvers is he's keeping an eye on his 6 o'clock, but he's also keeping the opponent guessing. So he's constantly rolling around, making him think that he's going to break one way or another, keeping him on his toes while watching him the entire time. Personally, I'd probably be trying to turn into the yak hard and engage it in a turn fight. But again, these rolling maneuvers, he's just keeping an eye on him. And eventually what you're going to see him do now, I see he's dropped his throttle here. Um, he's slowed down, and now he's trying to reel the opponent in. don't think I'd be rolling quite this much if I was doing this, because this is going to reduce your speed. Sucking his opponent in, because he's going to force an overshoot. Okay, by this point we can see the Yak is gaining on us. We should initiate a dive to try and gain a bit more separation here. Dive, I think this is the right move at this point, because there's not much else he can do. You can see here the opponent's getting closer and closer to him. He's diving to build up speed so he can maneuver here. So he's going fast, he's going 650 kph. He's attempting to dive away, and he's continuing to roll over, and he's not getting super slow yet, he's just getting slow enough so that his opponent closes on him and is staying out of sync. Like, he can't quite put the nose on him, he's not sure where he's going to go. What I think Enigma is trying to do here is he's trying to bait a rolling scissor with those rolls he just did. But I completely disagree with this maneuver here. Um, all the bandit really has to do now is uh, chop his straddle to 0%, Maybe pull up slightly, not much, and pull out his flaps. Maybe open his rats to full. And then he'd be slow enough that he'd be in Enigma's control zone and the fight would just be over. He basically, all he has to do is not take the bait to the rolling scissors and slow down. Well, let's see how it pounds out. He's making himself a difficult target and now he's really cranking down the roll. He's really cranking it down, staying out of plane, staying out of that gun sight, rolling around the top. Flaps come out, and he forces the overshoot. So thankfully, the bandit uh, doesn't chop his roll and just pulls through. This rolling is not really something that would occur to me, but it works. To so slow yourself down, pull yourself out of plane. He's really slow here, though. He's down at 200 kph. He's not going to have a lot of nose authority. The Yak has a lot more energy at this point, so maybe at this point I would start trying to take the fight more vertical. The enemy's kind of flying circles around us because of the energy advantage he's kept. So he does the right thing here. He's extending again and reeling that opponent back in. So now we're in a similar situation uh, 
as before, like when the bandit was diving us. We've got a bit of separation, and now we've, we've got a choice. And Enigma now decides to use a high-speed turn, try and force a head-on with the Yak-9, which I think he should have done in the first place. I think that would have been the correct call earlier, but now he's doing it now. So now he's pulling him back into the fight, um, and you can see here he's fainting a left-hand turn, not really cranking it down, watching him commit, and then he really cranks down the Gs, really pulls in the Gs. You see the gray out, the black out here, and he changes the he changes the. Uh, we'll pause here really quick. So what you can see he did is that he had this nice, easy left hand turn, um, and he wasn't cranking down on the stick, panicking or doing ever. He's pulling the opponent in for that overshoot again because that's what he's attempting to do here. He's attempting to use the uh roll advantage um, and ability to bleed off speed and pull a lot of AOA initially and get that nose up to force that enemy aircraft to overshoot. So he did this nice easy turn and once he saw his opponent cranking down that nose for a lead shot, he cranked into him tightly. Uh, perfect maneuver here, it's a great thing to do and as he cranked in um, and he was trying to force that overshoot, he changed the geometry and came up over the vertical, like tried to pull it up and over so we'd roll up over the nose. Now you'll see here, when we unpause quickly, the Yak, again, like is showing the advantage of the aircraft. Um, it is an amazing uh, one circle and two circle fighter, so it's gonna try to stay with him. But um, Enigma has the speed differential that he's built up by performing this maneuver, and that's gonna force the Yak out in front of him. What Enigma tried to do here is force a 3-9 line overshoot by reversing his turn just as the bandit does a flight path overshoot. Unfortunately, he lost sight of the bandit through the maneuver, so he reversed his turn far too early and pulled his aircraft straight into the bandit's gun sight. Now we have to jink the enemy's shot. Pay attention to the bandit's belly. If you can't see it, then he just can't take the shot. So the Yak attempts a couple of shots, doesn't get a hit, was close, but couldn't quite pull the lead. And now the Yak is coming out front, again using the flaps to stabilize the aircraft in slow flight uh, and also force the overshoot. Now again, the problem with using those flaps is if you get too slow, which is what those flaps are really good at, and you can see the, the Fock whoops wiggling around all over the place, he can't pull the nose shot. He sees he can't do that here and he pulls out of the way, which is a good maneuver. He doesn't keep trying to turn in and tighten out for the shot on that opponent. He saw that he wasn't going to make it, and he jinked out of the way so the opponent wouldn't blast him, which is a great maneuver. Reverses the turn. Now the Yak is out in front. Couldn't quite get the gunnery down there to hit that shot. Really critical moment. You really need to make those shots to the Fock Wolf, because once they're damaged, you've got a way easier time. So again, now cranking back into him and trying to get that shot really close there, and he gets a hit. He gets a hit. Yak just passed in front of our gun side. We could see that we hit his left wing. Enigma actually hit him with a 20mm HE shell. Uh, due to the way the damage model currently works, in particular the Yak-9's damage model, one HE shell to the wing will completely cripple maneuverability. So actually Enigma has already won the fight here, all but won the fight here. On the right wing tip, and that should be all she wrote here. Um, now that the aileron of that Yak is damaged, this is easy sailing, you know. So now he just swoops back in. He pull. He can pull a rate fight. He could do whatever he wants. Um, the yak is really out of cards here. So the yak is trying to crank back into him. It's just giving him a really easy high angle deflection shot. Enigma, I think, lands a couple of hits there, tossing some rounds out. I wouldn't use all four cans till I got closer, but he's really just trying to end the fight quickly here because the yak is holding all the cards. And beautiful deflection shooting here just absolutely crushes the yak. Uh, and that's the end of it. Big takeaways here is, again, keeping yourself unpredictable. If you want to rope him into a fight, you, you got to make it look a little juicy. So you notice that when he was rolling around uh, his axis, he's doing that to take his forward motion and put it in this vertical plane to bring his opponent, who wasn't just rolling with him constantly and doing the exact same thing, closer and closer to him because he's not fully in sync he's not matching that vertical and horizontal component. So he's slowly getting closer and closer and he's trying to line up a shot. He's trying to do that the whole time. So it's really good to like kind of roll around. He's able to keep an eye on his six, get a view of everything else around behind him. 
and he's unpredictable. He could crank right, he can crank left, he can go split S, he can go vertical. Well, I wouldn't recommend going vertical, but the opponent doesn't know where he's going to go. So he's trying to just line up a shot at a long distance. Looked like it was a Yak 9T too, so it had a big fucking honking cannon out the nose. Um, so not easy uh, to make shots with that. But Enigma didn't know that in the beginning. It was still a good, good maneuver. And just if you watch this, this is this is just a great example of how to fight um, in in a in, a, in an equal merge with at, when your plane's at a disadvantage. That um, Enigma was aggressive in, immediately, uh, which isn't always the right thing to do in like tournament play and things like that. But cranking into your opponent, trying to get those early shots. Honestly, when you're in the wild, you got to do that. Um, in my experience, it's the best way to, to earn a victory. Um, your opponent's going to be thinking about maintaining his energy, trying to, you know, not get sucked down and too slow sometimes, or he's going to also be cranking hard too, and you've got to take advantage while you have the chance and get those early hits. Wasn't able to secure that, and once he saw he was losing the fight, or losing the position in the fight in the one circle, extended out, used the Fox uh, advantages uh, to his advantage, extended out the fight, pulled him into a rolling type, not a rolling scissors, but a rolling maneuver that ended up into a scissors and a break turn to force that overshoot. Some beautiful airmanship here. Yak almost had a shot on him, but I mean, when you're playing this game, that those are the best moments is when you're just just outside of his gun sight. You're really cranking down and you force him to try to pull that shot that he can't, can't quite make. That's when you know you'll win. It's just right when he can't quite do it, He's using all of his energy, he's using all of his AOA, but he can't quite pull the shot. That's when he's going to shoot out in front of you and give you the opportunity. Enigma executed perfectly on his opponent's mistake. A great piece of flying, and I uh, look forward to seeing more of this. So thanks again, Enigma, for uh, having me on the channel, and uh, hope to see you guys soon. I'm on Twitch, uh, Tempest7MR. Okay, uh, as a summary, I think this was a rather scrappy fight. And both Enigma and the Yak made some serious mistakes. I think the Yak's biggest mistakes were that he refused to uh, capitalize on the massive advantage he had at several points in the fight because he wanted to keep his energy. I think he could have just shot his throttle, pulled down his flap, maybe opened his rats to fall, to slow down and get inside Enigma special zones at several points in that fight. Whereas um, Enigma's main mistakes were the failed reversal he made at one point, where the, he pulled himself into the Yak's gun sight, and secondly he tried to separate from the Yak after that initial engagement inside the 190 supercharger gap instead of diving down further. However, of course hindsight is 2020, and even the most experienced pilots in this game make many, many mistakes in dogfights. One more conclusion we can really notice is that the Yak-9 really rapidly gained an energy advantage over us and we struggled to keep up with most of his maneuvers. Like, you could really see how the 190 A6 was heavy and really struggled to keep up. Of course, this this is to be expected against a prolonged fight against the Yak, but it happened a lot quicker than it could have, because if Enigma only had two cannons instead of four, the onset of this uh, energy advantage that the Yak got would have been significantly delayed. And Enigma would I don't think would have struggled so much to keep up with the enemy, at least for the first three or four turns. This is because even though the extra cannons don't make you lose much speed, they still significantly increase your wing loading and reduce your acceleration. I personally always take out two cannons in 190s. Another point I didn't mention earlier is that during this dogfight, both Enigma and the Yak had to completely focus on each other outside of the portion in the middle where Enigma tried to get some separation. Meaning, pretty much both pilots lost all their SA. So if you're in a high traffic area and have a prolonged dogfight like this, chances are one or both of you will get dirt parted. Generally speaking, you want to play it safe. If you want to play it safe, uh, you want to try and avoid these sort of prolonged engagements and try to sh end the fight, generally speaking, within a minute or two. Unless, of course, you have a wingman to cover you, in which case. That's fine. Anyways, that's it. I could not say this in the intro, but I can now. This video is different from the previous ones because I didn't get shot down. In previous videos, there was a lot of overlap in comments on why things went wrong. In this version, you can see there's a lot more contrast between what everyone is saying. 
there are a lot of different ways to skin a cat. So when things work out, the mind can wander to talk about what could be better or to explain things um, of why they're working well. Fraxta, who is the newest pilot out of the group, did express his disagreements with some things. He did not want to lose eyesight of the yak. He did not really understand why I was rolling to bait the yak in for reversal. reversal. However, he did understand that some disparity between the energy state of the yak and the 190 was not a good thing. And he offered up some, some suggestions of what he would do. Now, I wouldn't necessarily agree with him, his comment about uh, trying to go vertical when you know, I was like sub 300 kph, you know, isn't what I would recommend, but his desire of this energy state that he wanted to get to is something that we can all agree with. And it's just interesting to hear from a newer player who doesn't have all the dogfight theory. So he's, um, he knows where the fight should go or where it should be at some point, but he might not, he might not necessarily know how to get there. And he's trying to offer up ideas, but you know, I don't necessarily agree with him, but it's just a good point of reference to kind of go back and think about, you know, when you don't have all the theory, you may not know what exactly the next step should be, but you kind of have an, have an idea of where, where it should eventually go. Revolves really focused his comments on trying to keep the fight in the most ideal state by leaning into the advantages of the 190 speed. Listening closely to what he is talking about, he's really prioritizing making moves at the ideal time and making sure to keep options open hitting the corner speed in order to be able to whip it around if diving away then keep that up and try to whip it around and then force a merge again he did bring up a good point about uh what the yak's options were um yes they didn't materialize in this video but he did bring up good points you know what's a good way to beat a reversal draw flaps cut chop your throttle um in, in this fight i had a feeling that for whatever reason, I just had a feeling that Yak wouldn't really do that. Um, and if he didn't, you know, I was keeping my eyes on him. And, and if I had a feeling that he was going to do that, I had enough um, speed to dive away. Or sorry, not speed, but enough altitude to dive away to pick up speed to get away. He, you know, revolves, uh, brings up a really good point. It's something you have to really think about because you can get caught if you're lazy and aren't really watching. Now, Tempest is a very technical player and also flies quite aggressive. He spent a lot of time talking about the psychology of the fight, sucking the opponent into an opportunity and then turning the tables on him. Tempest and I both flew for years in World War II together and uh, that game had a lot of mental games. And you can see that reflected in his comments. Ultimately, you are fighting against players and not robots. So greed, frustration and desperation come into play. And it's really hard to quantify, but it's really important to think about. And, and the Tempest did note that with his comments, like some of the things that he was talking about isn't stuff that he would necessarily do in a tournament play where people are flying much more uh, disciplined. And, you know, we're f flying here in the wild. And sometimes you just kind of have to be super aggressive. I want to thank everyone who came to comment. Uh, please check out their Twitches, their YouTubes, uh, and their Discords, which is linked in the description and in the comment below. If you found this interesting, please consider liking and subscribing. I actually had a lot of fun um, with this video. Lastly, if you would like to comment or if you would like to have a video analyzed, please get in touch with me on my Discord. Would like to get um, different opinions and different people involved. Also, just different clips. Like, I have a certain way that I fly, other people have different ways that they fly. So, I think it would be really neat to get some clips from the community. Um, but again, thank you and have a good one.